Hi, my name is Dr. Ken Rishu. I've been a practicing physician in Colorado Springs for over 24 years and am board certified in pediatric medicine. I'd like to talk to you today about cardiovascular health. The reason I'm interested in this is for two reasons. One, we're seeing cardiovascular disease and hypertension in younger and younger children as time goes by. What's also very important to me is my own family history and my wife's family history of cardiovascular disease. As we age, we have increasing cardiovascular health concerns. How healthy is your heart? Is it an important question? Should you be worried? We think the answer, unfortunately, is yes. Cardiovascular disease is an epidemic in the United States and worldwide. It's a major cause of death and disability. About a million people a year will die of cardiovascular disease in the U.S. alone. If we talk about cardiac disease, that's about 35% of all deaths. Someone dies of a stroke every three to four minutes, and someone dies of cardiovascular disease every 60 seconds in the United States alone. Mortality statistics compiled by the National Center for Health Statistics and the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute show that in both males and females, cardiovascular diseases are easily the number one cause of death. More recent data shows that approximately 52% of all women in the United States are expected to die prematurely of cardiovascular disease. The number in men is about 48%. When speaking of cardiovascular diseases, we talk about several main problems. The most common one, accounting for approximately half of all cardiovascular deaths, is coronary heart disease, or what is commonly referred to as heart attack. The next largest group are people who die of stroke. These are followed by other vascular diseases, such as high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, and diseases of the arteries, such as renal arteries, pulmonary arteries, and other problems. One of the most frightening things about these cardiovascular diseases is that many of them have no symptoms prior to an acute event. Hypertension and heart attack are sometimes called a silent killer because as your arteries narrow, there are often no symptoms until you have an acute event which leads to a sudden plugging of an artery and a heart attack. Of all first heart attack victims, Approximately 50% have had no symptoms prior to their first heart attack. Their first warning is the heart attack itself. Another frightening statistic is that of first heart attack victims, only 50% survive. What this means is that 25% of deaths due to heart attack were without warning and without prior symptoms. Of those who do survive, nearly 30% of survivors will die within one year after their heart attack. So one of the most frightening statistics to me is in the United States and other developed countries, your chance of dying of cardiovascular disease is one in two people. Imagine leaving your spouse alone to deal with your death. Imagine losing your spouse to cardiovascular disease. It's a very frightening prospect. How does this occur? In this slide, you can see a schematic of an arterial cross-section over decades of your life. In your 20s, your arteries are clean. They are flexible. They actually help your heart pump the blood. Microscopically, there are often changes beginning at this stage, but in the 30s, we can begin to see some thickening of the arterial wall, followed by plaque formation in the 40s, which continues to build into the 50s, 60s, and beyond. For many years, this was thought to be an inevitable process of aging. Recent science, however, shows us that this may not be inevitable and that there are mechanisms at work. For many years, scientists and physicians have tried to determine what the risk factors have been and what the causes are for this progression of cardiovascular disease with age. For many years, cholesterol has been considered the prime culprit in advancing cardiovascular disease. However, over the past few years, what has happened is experts now agree that the inciting event for cardiovascular disease is inflammation and that atherosclerosis or plaque formation is primarily an inflammatory disease. If you look on the left side of the slide, 
you will see an area of inflammation in the lining of your artery, which is called the endothelium. The endothelium is a single cell layer thick, which is responsible for maintaining the health of your arterial system. When inflammatory chemicals circulate through your bloodstream, this causes inflammation of the endothelium. This allows things to stick. The primary events are white cells sticking to the endothelial layer. This coupled with high levels of oxidized LDL cholesterol allow for infiltration through the endothelial wall and the beginning of plaque formation. As time goes on, you see the smooth muscle gets thick and between plaque and smooth muscle thickening, the artery begins to fill up and become inflexible. So what allows this process to occur? In this cross-section, taken from the American Journal of Cardiology, we see the same process occurring over the decades, but what you see underneath the artery is a label called endothelial dysfunction. The endothelial dysfunction is the primary focus of this talk, and we will discuss how to improve endothelial function and thereby improve cardiovascular health. So as your arteries go from normal to partially blocked to severely blocked, you can see how this restricts blood flow. You can also see how the thickening of the artery will render the artery inflexible. At this stage, what is happening is your blood flow is reduced. Your body still wants the same amount of oxygen and nutrients and demands this from the heart. The heart, therefore, has to pump harder and work harder, and the pressure in the system is increased. The high pressure in the system, or high blood pressure, advances the process, causing further damage and inflammation to the arterial wall and contributes to this vicious cycle of damage and arteriosclerosis. Eventually, a plaque can rupture from trauma, smoking, or other events. When the plaque ruptures, it acutely can cause the vessel to clot off or spasm. Depending on where this occurs, this will result in possibly a heart attack, a stroke, kidney failure, or lack of circulation in an extremity. So how do we affect this process? Of the things that we are able to change, what are the major factors that we can alter to reduce our risk of cardiovascular disease, including heart attack and stroke? One of the best things we can do is, if we smoke, stop smoking. Cigarettes contain a large amount of toxins and are clearly linked to both cancer and cardiovascular disease. But how many people do you know have successfully and completely stopped smoking forever? The other variable we can affect is exercise. Unfortunately, as most of us know, we are becoming more and more sedentary in our lifestyles. And so exercise is an important component of health, but one that is often lacking. Of course, another component that is always mentioned is changing your diet. When is the best time to change your diet? After you have a problem or before? I would suggest to do it before you have significant health issues. Of course, many of us eat in an unhealthy manner due to busy work schedules and lifestyles. How easy is it to change to the type of diet that we know would be more healthy for us? It's not very easy, is it? So what are we left with? We're left with medications. Medications primarily focus on reducing blood pressure and reducing cholesterol. Medicines which reduce blood pressure can be very effective. However, they don't improve blood flow to the organs. Medications that treat cholesterol can lower high cholesterol. However, these medications are not shown to improve cardiovascular disease, but merely to slow its progression. Finally, we have surgical options. Surgery can include stent placement or coronary artery bypass graft as examples. The problem is that these interventions, although life-saving, are done at the end stage of a long process of disease and do not address or improve the primary factors which are responsible for these diseases. These are merely band-aid fixes which themselves are not permanent. What if there was a way that you could stop this from happening, even reverse the process, and return your cardiovascular system to optimal health. In 1998, a Nobel Prize was awarded for physiology or medicine to three scientists specifically for their discoveries concerning nitric oxide 
as a signaling molecule in the cardiovascular system. One of these recipients is Dr. Louis Ignaro. He was one of the three recipients of the 1998 Nobel Prize and had several things to say about his discovery. He believed that, quote, nitric oxide is the body's natural cardiovascular wonder drug, unquote. Also, more than any other single factor, nitric oxide may be the key to living a longer, healthier life. Dr. Ignaro believes that nitric oxide has extraordinary importance in the health of virtually every cell in the body. He believes it has the potential of reversing and preventing the most aggressive killer in the world, heart disease. He also observes that it is becoming more and more clear that nitric oxide is a molecule that may prevent and cure many diseases at once. So how do you get nitric oxide? Where does it come from? The only known source in your body is an amino acid called L-arginine, which is part of your diet. L-arginine is considered a semi-essential amino acid, which when taken into the body is acted on by an enzyme called nitric oxide synthase. The resultant reaction yields nitric oxide, the health benefits of which we will be discussing further. A byproduct of this reaction is a second amino acid called L-citrulline. This will become of prime importance as we discuss the benefits of arginine and its metabolism. Your body can recycle L-citrulline into more arginine, which is of critical importance, as it prolongs the release of nitric oxide in your system. What can nitric oxide do for us? Well, one of the most amazing things it's been shown to do is to stop plaque buildup and help reverse it. We know it decreases inflammation. As we discussed, release of nitric oxide into the bloodstream and into the blood vessel wall will relax the artery causing increased blood flow. It will reverse plaque, keeping arteries flexible and allowing blood to flow smoothly. This results in a drop in blood pressure, improved blood flow, and a heart that does not have to work as hard. Nitric oxide has also been shown to promote healing both in bone and soft tissue. The American Heart Association has said, the discovery of nitric oxide and its function is one of the most important in the history of cardiovascular medicine. Several prominent physicians have written books on this subject. One of these is a book by Dr. Ignaro, the Nobel Prize recipient, and it is called No More Heart Disease. It is subtitled How Nitric Oxide Can Prevent, Even Reverse Heart Disease and Strokes. I would recommend to everyone that they obtain a copy of this book and read it. It's a very easy book to read, and it is very powerful. And in it, he outlines a simple combination of ingredients that will help you improve your cardiovascular health. The other book I'd like to mention is written by Dr. John Cook. Dr. John Cook is head of vascular biology at Stanford Medical School. His book is called The Cardiovascular Cure, and he discusses how to strengthen your cardiovascular system and protect it against heart attack and stroke, also by using a combination of ingredients based on L-arginine. Now I'd like to introduce to you an extraordinary gentleman, Dr. J. Joseph Prendergast. Dr. Joseph Prendergast, or Dr. Joe, as he's called, has been a practicing physician for nearly 40 years, board certified in internal medicine, endocrinology, and human metabolism. He has authored over 50 articles in peer-reviewed medical journals. He practices endocrinology in Palo Alto, California, very near to Stanford University. Dr. Joe's experience with arginine began with his own health at the age of 37, was diagnosed with advanced atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. This was despite what he felt was an exemplary lifestyle, including regular exercise and a healthy diet. Dr. Joe knew genetically he was programmed for heart disease, as his father had a major stroke at the age of 42, was never able to work again. Dr. Joe went to his research associates at Stanford. He knew they were working on arginine, and he actually began himself as one of the first clinical subjects on arginine. He continued to scour the research and add different ingredients as time went on. And what he found was after several years, on a follow-up CAT scan, he had actually reversed all of his plaque formation, and a subsequent coronary calcium score was zero. He was amazed 
at these results not having expected to reverse his own cardiovascular disease. What he had done in the meantime was begin his patients on a regimen of arginine and other ingredients as he knew these were natural ingredients and were not harmful. What he found is that he had tremendous clinical results in his diabetic practice. As an endocrinologist, Dr. Joe sees about 80% diabetic patients. As we already stated, about 50% of the general population will die of cardiovascular disease. If you have diabetes, your risk is even greater. There's approximately an 80% risk of death from cardiovascular disease. Dr. Joe, however, can recall no deaths from heart attack or stroke in his patients once he began this regimen. There have been no reported new cases of blindness, amputations, and he's virtually eliminated the need for dialysis in his diabetic patients. He compiled his own formulation of ingredients and was seeking someone to collaborate with to come up with a single formulation. He partnered with Dr. William Keller, a PhD pharmacologist who trained at Idaho State and University of Washington. He's also been on the faculty at the University of Louisiana in Monroe and Samford University. Dr. Keller's nutritional pharmacology expertise, Dr. Joe's clinical experience, and the laboratory science of Nobel Prize winners and others led them to develop a comprehensive blend of ingredients for optimal cardiovascular health. This is based on the science of L-arginine, which we have been discussing, but includes several other ingredients, which we will discuss. Arginine, of course, is important as the basis for the formula as the enzyme nitric oxide synthase occurs in the endothelium and converts arginine to citrulline and nitric oxide. We've already said nitric oxide regulates blood vessel tone, flexibility. It relaxes the blood vessels, which causes immediate improvement in blood flow and decreased blood pressure. Nitric oxide also has several other effects, including interfering with platelet aggregation. Citrulline is an important component of the blend because as Dr. Keller and Dr. Joe have discovered, among others, if you add citrulline to the formula, it's metabolized in the cell to give more arginine. This in turn yields more nitric oxide over a longer period of time. Why not just plain arginine? Well, there are two very important reasons why arginine alone is not nearly as effective. And that has to do with inhibitors of nitric oxide production from arginine. The first one we're going to talk about is a molecule called ADMA. ADMA is produced by your body and is directly related to vascular dysfunction, heart disease, and death. It is a product of your metabolism and can be affected to some degree by factors such as smoking, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, and high levels of inflammation. There is no known way to lower ADMA levels in your body. ADMA is of such overreaching importance that Dr. John Cook considered ADMA to be the uber marker for cardiovascular disease. ADMA directly interferes with arginine's conversion to nitric oxide by competing with it to enter the endothelial cell and by competing for the enzyme nitric oxide synthase. This is the reason that sustained levels of arginine in your blood are so important. This slide shows how ADMA and arginine are linked in terms of risk of death. The front right of the slide with the shortest box shows you that your best chance for a long healthy life is to have a high arginine and low ADMA level. That one of the unhealthiest situations you can be in is to have a high ADMA and a low arginine level. This makes the arginine-citrulline cycle of vital importance. As arginine is converted to nitric oxide, it gives off citrulline, which by several metabolic steps is converted back into arginine. This will allow the arginine to once again form more nitric oxide. Is this of clinical importance? Indeed it is. This slide is courtesy of Dr. Rainer Berger, who is one of the foremost experts in the world on arginine and ADMA research. Dr. Berger looked at using plain arginine as a supplement, those are the black dots on the graph, and using an arginine-citrulline combination as a supplement, and those are the blue dots on the graph. 
He measured arginine levels over time and asked three crucial questions. How high did the arginine level increase, and how long did it stay elevated? What proportion of the day was that? What he found is that with standard arginine, it increased 127 percent, and the level stayed elevated for about six hours, which of course is 25 percent of the day. If you use the combination, the level increased 182 percent, and the levels remained elevated for 24 hours, which is 100 percent of the day. The area between the two curves, which is shaded, represents the increased arginine levels in the blood and the increased availability of nitric oxide in the body, which makes a significant clinical difference. This is important so that you don't have to take arginine six times a day. You can take it in combination with citrulline once or possibly twice a day and get sustained increased arginine levels throughout 24 hours. The other main inhibitor of the reaction that produces nitric oxide from arginine are free radicals. Oxygen-free radicals or reactive oxygen species directly interfere with the activity of nitric oxide synthase. That is why whole food-based antioxidants such as resveratrol are so important to optimize arginine supplementation. Resveratrol is one of the classes of polyphenols found in red wine. And it is one of the reasons that the rate of cardiovascular disease in France, for example, is much lower than expected. These antioxidants reduce LDL oxidation, which interferes with the second step of cardiovascular development, the primary one, of course, being inflammation. And reduction of free radicals improves the activity of the nitric oxide synthase molecule. Pomegranate similarly is a whole food antioxidant which has been greatly shown to enhance cardiovascular health. This also inhibits LDL oxidation and enhances the activity of the endothelial nitric oxide synthase. Another thing pomegranate has been shown to do is reduce the arterial wall thickening which leads to the decreased flexibility we've discussed of the arteries. So antioxidants are all the rage and are quite important as it turns out in promoting cardiovascular health for reasons we've just seen. Another important component in the formulation is vitamin D. Vitamin D can be supplemented in two major forms, D2 and D3. Vitamin D3 is the preferred method of supplementation. We've long known that vitamin D3 improves calcium absorption from the GI tract. However, more recent information shows that vitamin D3 has a wide variety of interactions in the body. It affects the immune system, helping fight diseases such as infections and cancer. It enhances the health of the cardiovascular system and helps maintain the integrity of the arteries. It is an important anti-inflammatory component. In 2010, the American Journal of Cardiology actually printed an article that recognizes the role of vitamin D in cardiovascular health. If you look at the concluding sentence, it says vitamin D is now recognized as important for cardiovascular health and its deficiency as a potential risk factor for several cardiovascular disease processes. So vitamin D is important and organizations such as the American Medical Association and the American Academy of Pediatrics do recommend supplementation with vitamin D. Another important component in this formulation is vitamin K. The classic vitamin K relates to clotting factors. This is vitamin K1, which is a philoquinone molecule. The component found in Dr. Keller and Prendergast formulation is actually vitamin K2. It's in a slightly different chemical family called amenoquinone and relates to calcium metabolism rather than clotting factors. It enhances bone mineralization by taking calcium from places it shouldn't be, such as in arterial plaque, and putting it in the matrix protein for calcium in the bones. It's been shown to actually stop and reverse atherosclerotic plaque calcification. This is an example of an article showing that dietary intake of vitamin K2 is associated with a reduced risk of coronary heart disease. Homocysteine is another amino acid which occurs in the bloodstream. However, its levels have been related to endothelial injury. 
So elevated levels of homocysteine begin part of the injury and inflammatory process that can start the atherosclerotic cascade. It's been shown that folic acid, vitamin B6, and B12 act in concert to lower homocysteine levels, and these are found in the formulation as well. The last specific component I'd like to mention is D-ribose. Ribose is metabolized specifically by myocardial or heart muscle cells to produce a compound called ATP. ATP is the energy that the heart muscle runs from. If the heart muscle is working hard, if it's failing, increased levels of ATP can increase the energy supply to the myocardial cell and improve its function. So in this slide, courtesy of Dr. Berger, we see that nitric oxide has several important functions as an endogenous protector of the vessel wall. Starting at the top and moving clockwise, it relaxes and opens the arteries, which improves blood flow and lowers blood pressure. It inhibits platelet aggregation and stickiness. It inhibits the sticking of white cells to the wall of the artery, which begins the inflammatory cascade. It decreases the smooth muscle thickening of the artery, which inhibits its flexibility. It inhibits free radical formation, and it inhibits the oxidation of LDL. So is this actually important in real patients? Well, in fact, that was powerfully demonstrated by Dr. Joe and his study in himself and his clinical practice. But word of Dr. Joe's success reached the ears of Dr. Siva Arunasalam, who is director and founder of the High Desert Heart Institute in Victorville, California. Dr. Siva has worked with Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, which has a very active heart transplant program. Dr. Siva's role in the High Desert Heart Institute is to help manage patients, many of whom are awaiting cardiac transplant. They manage these patients to the maximal extent of medical knowledge and are very closely followed. Dr. Siva decided to take about 35 of his patients who were very seriously ill and add the arginine formulation to their regimen. There was serious concern that some of these patients may not live to their transplant as they were, quote, at the maximum of pharmacological and medical management, unquote, at the High Desert Heart Institute. And so looking for something else to benefit these patients, he added this arginine complex. And what he found is what he calls extraordinary results. He admits his surprise at seeing the amazing benefits that this formulation provided to his patients. One of the things that was most surprising to him is what is quoted below as, quote, remarkable and positive remodeling of the heart, unquote. This was a formal medical study which included multiple medical tests to include blood work, EKGs, echocardiograms, blood flow measurements, imaging, and many other tests. Over 7,000 points of data were collected during the course of this study. The original study group, which finished 33 patients, was for 90 days. An additional 12 patients who were more ill continued for an additional 90, making a 180-day trial on these patients. Dr. Siva summarized his results for us in a recent talk. What they found was that across the board, lipid profiles improved. The average HDL increased 18%, which was found statistically highly significant. Triglycerides decreased 40%, highly significant. Markers of diabetes improved with the average serum glucose going down 8%, which was, again, statistically highly significant. Remember, this patient population was already being managed to the maximum extent medical science would allow. This is a further improvement based on the arginine complex. Inflammatory markers, of course, are very important when following cardiovascular disease. One of these markers is platelet count. The platelet counts showed a highly significant decrease. C-reactive protein was down 25%, which was highly significant. Kidney function improved. Creatinines dropped 11%, highly significant, and urinary microalbumin was down 70%, again, highly significant. Hypertension is one of the most important factors surrounding cardiovascular disease and congestive heart failure. Blood pressure significantly improved. 
Systolic blood pressures went down an average of 13%, diastolic down 17%. Both of these, again, were highly significant. What's not reflected in the slide is that these patients all were brought down to within the normal range of blood pressure with the addition of the arginine formulation. The CASP is the central aortic systolic pressure and is a direct measurement at the root of the aorta. This measures how hard the heart has to work to pump the blood out. This decreased 6% and was statistically significant. Interestingly, this CASP measurement in this study was done by a device called a B-Pro, which is a non-invasive class 2 medical device, according to the FDA, and correlates with the results of cardiac catheterization greater than 99%. Studies of blood flow included ABI, or ankle brachial index. This blood flow increased 16%, which was highly significant. And finally, an objective quality of life test, which was used, is called a six-minute walk test, which has patients on a treadmill for six minutes, and measures their discomfort and shortness of breath, the patients consistently showed dramatic improvement. So in his concluding remarks, Dr. Siva said that 7 out of 10 Americans would benefit from increased levels of nitric oxide in their system. His closing comments to the audience were, You have been delivered a miracle of life. Shame on you if you don't share it. And that's the purpose of this message today is to share this information with as many people as possible. So Dr. Berger believes that L-arginine has been shown in clinical and scientific research to improve every stage of the cardiovascular continuum from the asymptomatic state to myocardial failure and death. Arginine has been shown to affect high blood pressure and high cholesterol, high blood glucose and diabetes. It ameliorates the adverse effects of smoking and other risk factors. It begins to work in people with asymptomatic vascular dysfunction and the early stages of coronary heart disease. It improves active coronary heart disease and helps to reverse and improve vascular calcification. It has been shown to benefit people with infarction and heart dysfunction and has been dramatically shown to improve chronic heart failure. So Dr. Siva now routinely adds the complex formula that was used in the High Desert Heart Study to his patient's medical regimen. This proprietary formulation is called Proarginine Plus and is manufactured by a company named Synergy Worldwide. Dr. Siva feels so strongly about this formulation that this is a reproduction of the poster you will see when you walk into the lobby of the High Desert Heart Institute touting the clinically documented benefits of Proarginine Plus. The multiple benefits of increased levels of nitric oxide in the body have been shown through thousands upon thousands of medical studies. We have discussed that it can combat premature cardiovascular aging, maintains healthy blood pressure levels, reduce the stress on the heart, and improve circulation and blood flow to vital organs. We also know that it helps improve insulin resistance and helps maintain healthy blood sugar levels. It has a boost to the immune system, being a primary messenger for your body's immune system. Blood viscosity is reduced, and with increased blood flow and oxygen delivery, energy levels are improved. Nitric oxide has been shown to be important in helping regulate normal cell division, immune function, and the secretion of normal hormones. In addition to increasing blood flow to the muscles, which increases athletic performance and stamina, it's also been shown to improve muscle building and size. Nitric oxide helps preferentially burn body fat over carbohydrates and protein. It has been shown to accelerate wound healing in both soft tissue and bone. Nitric oxide itself has an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effect. It's been shown to help promote healthy sexual performance and can be a natural replacement for medications designed to enhance erectile performance. Another powerful benefit is the stimulation of the natural release of human growth hormone, which has been shown in medical studies to have powerful anti-aging benefits. It enhances function of the digestive system as well as many other systems in the body. 
So I really believe this changes the way that we look at and approach cardiovascular health in the United States and across the world. This will change what we can offer people to achieve maximum cardiovascular fitness. As an L-arginine complexer made with the strictest quality standards in mind, ProArginine Plus is a major source for nitric oxide in the body. The other ingredients that are necessary to enhance the performance of L-arginine and nitric oxide production in the body are present. These include citrulline, antioxidants, vitamin D, and the others we have discussed. So you need to ask yourself this question. Will you become the next statistic? I hope you find this information useful. I appreciate your time, and I thank you for listening.